everyone, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and I just wired up a new on-off switch for my Sega Genesis Mini. As many of you may know, for the Sega Genesis Mini, the on-off switch doesn't actually function, it's just for looks, but I figured out a way to wire it to where it actually functions, and I'm going to show you how to do that today. This tutorial is going to focus more on installing the physical switch and modifying the LED, but in addition to that, you're also going to have to modify the RetroPie script. In the description down below, I'll make sure to post all the necessary commands to change the script. So when you push the button, it knows when to turn off, and when you push it again, it knows when to turn back on. And also, I'll post a link to ETA Prime's guide that shows a full tutorial on how to change that script. And I'd like to give a big shout out to ETA Prime for making an easy to follow tutorial. Okay, so we're going to start with just taking the Sega Genesis apart. There's going to be four screws that hold the case together. And here's a look at the on-off switch. It's a non-functional switch and it just slides back and forth there. And it's got a screw that secures it in place. So I'm using a Raspberry Pi Zero board. And if you follow my tutorial on how to build the Sega Genesis Mini, you're going to have to make a couple small modifications. Uh, the biggest thing is you're going to have to turn the Pi board to where it's facing the other direction, to where the cords are going off to the left instead of going to the right. Because right here where the X is located is where the switch is going to go. So we want to make sure to keep this area nice and open so that switch fits in there just right. So to install our on off button, we're going to have to attach a couple wires here to our board at spots 5 and 6. So here's a diagram to help better explain it. The part that's outlined there in yellow is where we're going to be attaching at 5 and 6. And there's a couple ways we can attach the wires. You can use this GPIO header that you solder directly to the Raspberry Pi board and then you can attach clips to this that are removable. Um, I don't want to buy extra clips and deal with all that. So I'm just going to solder directly to the Pi Zero board with my wires. And I found the best way to do this is to go ahead and fill the hole with solder that you're going to be using. And then once that's filled, you heat from the back side and push the wire through. So I'm going to heat that solder up and then push the wire through at the same time. So there might be some better ways out there to solder, but this worked pretty well for me. Now that you have those soldered in place, you want to go ahead and insulate them so the metal can't come in contact with anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and seal the bottom of them here with hot glue so the wires are completely protected and insulated. So here's a look at the hot glue I applied. Notice at the bottom of it here, there's no exposed wiring and it's completely sealed off. Now it's time to go ahead and attach the switch. Here's the switch I'm going to be using. It's a push button momentary switch. Just using a regular on off switch won't work. You need to use a momentary switch which bridges two wires together when you push the button and when you release it, it breaks the bridge. And for this particular switch, I had to bend one of the tabs here. It should be straight up, but I had to bend it sideways so I can get it to fit in there just right. So I'm going to mount the switch at an angle just like this. So when I flip that power switch to the on position, it's going to push that momentary switch in and make contact. The momentary switch is spring loaded, so it automatically pushes back out when you slide the power button against it. So this is probably about the biggest size switch you could use. It'd be okay to use a little bit smaller switch and you could get an even better angle. But whatever switch you decide to use, you need to have at least this much angle or that switch won't work properly. To attach the wires to my switch, I'm going to have to use a couple terminal connections that look like this. So I'm going to encrypt these connections onto the wires, then I can secure these wires to the switch with the screw. So I have my push button all wired up to the Pi Zero board. Now it's time to secure the push button to the Sega Genesis. So you'll want to find the perfect angle to get that switch to where it operates just the way you want it to. Once you find that perfect angle, you want to hold it in place, and now we're going to use a hot glue gun to secure it right where we want it. So you don't want to be cheap with the hot glue. Go ahead and secure that switch with a healthy amount of glue on both sides. And here's a look at it now that the glue's dried. You're going to want at least this much glue. I'm using a Gorilla brand glue stick, and it seems to have really good adhesion. Okay, I got everything wired up and plugged in for a test. Now we're going to hit that shutdown switch and it should shut down automatically. So it shut down just like it's supposed to. Now let's go ahead and power it back up and test that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the switch again and it should fire right back up. There we go. Seems to be working just like it's supposed to, but we got one issue. So what happens is when we hit the shutdown switch, it powers down like it's supposed to and this green LED light powers off, which indicates that there's no power to the computer no more, but the USB power still stays live. So we still have power going to the Sega Genesis hub, causing this red LED light to stay on. But no worries, we have a fix for this also. So we have three different options we can do. 
One is, we can just ignore the red light. It's not going to hurt nothing. It's just going to stay on all the time. The other is, we can cut the LED wires to the red light to where it doesn't turn on no more. The third option is what I'm going to do. We're going to rewire the LED to the Pi Zero board to where it does turn off when you power it down. So there's two screws that secure the USB hub. They should be Phillips screws. I've removed those. And now we're going to go ahead and pull this loose. Now there's going to be two smaller wires that attach to that red LED. So I'm going to cut those wires as close to the USB board as possible. So I've cut the wires pretty much flush with the USB board. Now I'm going to cut the wires on the other end where the LED is, but you need to take note which side is red and which side is black, because that will indicate power and ground. Now I'm going to solder two more wires to the Pi Zero board located right here and right here. Here's that pinout diagram to help better explain it again. Where the red boxes are located is where we're going to be attaching wires. So at pinout hole number 8, that's going to be connecting to the power side or the red wire side of the LED. And at pinout hole number 39, that will be connecting to the ground side of the LED or the black wire side of the LED. So I'm just soldering directly to the Pi Zero board again with two wires. So I'm just filling that hole with solder first, then heating it up on the back side, then pushing the wire through. Then after I'm done soldering those two points, I'm going to seal both of those with hot glue to insulate them. Now I'm going to solder the wire at number 8 on the power side of the LED, then solder the wire from number 39 on the ground side of the LED. Okay, so we got the LED rewired. Now we're ready for a test. Go ahead and put that USB board back together with the two screws. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug in all my cables. I'm going to hit the shutdown switch here, and the LED should turn off. So the shutdown sequence has started. And there we go, the LED turned off just like it's supposed to. Now it's time to tuck all those cables in and put it back together nicely. And here's a snapshot of how I ran all those cables and made them fit just right. There's no switch in this picture, but it gives you a good idea how to run your HDMI cable and your USB cables. Well, we're all done now. Thanks for watching. If you want to hear more from me, please like and subscribe. And if you want to see more of my videos, just click any of these links.